So a couple years ago, I co-hosted a podcast, and we did the uh, top 10 conspiracy theories. So everybody took a couple topics and went back and decided uh, to do research on that topic. But one of the ones I did was Flat Earth. thought it'd be funny. I wanted to make fun of it. Come to find out, I couldn't debunk any of the Flat Earth um, theories. Every time I looked into a Flat Earth theory, uh, like the rays of the sun, or the fact that um, you can't see curvature no matter how high up you go, the fact that all NASA photos are created images and not actual images, uh, the fact the moon doesn't turn at all, it's just synced with us constantly. There's so many things that I couldn't debunk, and I kept looking into it, looking into it. So when I got on the podcast, I was like, I don't, I, okay, I'm halfway sold on it. It's not that I believe it, but I can't debunk it. And the more I looked into it, the more crazy it got on how I could not debunk it. And then when I would talk to friends and family, they'd tell me I'm crazy. And then I would look into it more because I'm like, I have to prove to myself that I'm doing my due diligence. I'm looking and looking and looking. And no matter what I did, like I can't disprove flat earth. And it blew my freaking mind. So now I don't know what to think. And everybody thinks I'm crazy. What do you think? What did you say? I don't think the, the world is square anymore because, because if we went to the bottom of the air, the, the bottom of the world, it would just fall off of it. So what do you think it is? It's a straight line. You think the earth's flat? Yeah. This is the Illuminati card game, which was released in 1994. Yeah, 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 yeah. True thoughts. Activating penal glands with neural linguistics to this one. Telekinetic frequencies. Multidimensional. This world is separated by countries, cities and towns and borders. Yeah. They divide and conquer. Yeah, they're monsters. They are the war enforcers. Ah. This is Warner Von Braun, and this is Walt Disney. Mr. Von Braun was brought over during Operation Paperclip. Mr. Walt Disney here was a big movie producer, and these two guys were very good buddies with each other. But more on Mr. Von Braun here, he was a scientist that lived in Germany under the Nazi regime. And when the war ended, America, instead of prosecuting him, they brought him over in Operation Paperclip. But let's see what Mr. Von Braun did. He created CGI, oops, this is the one, sorry. Created NASA. Also, Mr. Von Braun led NASA's development of the Saturn V rocket that took Apollo 11 to the moon, supposedly. But remember when I said earlier that when Buddy checked out on us, he had left something on his tombstone? Let's take a look at it. This is what Warner Von Braun put on his tombstone. Psalms 19.1. Wow, a Bible verse. And what does that Bible verse say? The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Wow, Warner. So why would a dude that believes in space put Psalms 19.1, a Bible verse, that talks about the firmament? Well, maybe he knew that we weren't going to space and maybe we live under something like this. But what does NASA mean? To beguile, to deceive, to mislead. All of this I just said, you're not going to get unless you do your research. So go do your research. That's the only way you're going to learn. Haven't you heard? The globe is flat. Research flat earth. Okay, people keep asking this question and the answer is simple and it's one thing and it's one thing only. The reason why they keep us in the dark from all of this stuff, the reason why they keep all of this truth from us is to hide God, period. 
They want us as far away from God as possible. And this is why. What do you think is going to happen when people start questioning these truths or these lies that we've been told and they start following the white rabbit down the white rabbit hole and they start to realize, hey, hold on a second. This wasn't a coincidence. All of this didn't happen from happen from some big bang, bro. This earth and this this realm, this this thing that we're in, this life that we are in did not just happen so perfectly on accident by some big bang. Some big bang explosion by accident just made us herbivores with flat teeth and, and long intestines to, to digest plants because that's what we're supposed to eat, right? And carnivores like, you know, lions and tigers and bears in the freaking wild with sharp teeth and, and, and shorter intestines for digesting meat because they're carnivores. It's just an accident though, right? How there's a cure for absolutely everything inside of nature and food for us to live off of forever. Accident though. The Big Bang. How our bodies have the ability to heal themselves. How a, a freaking lizard has the ability to regrow limbs. How certain animals in the wild are, are have certain poisons and certain things that they do. Certain special abilities to hunt other animals. It's like all these things are perfectly, you know what I'm saying? The way that bees help, you know, humanity. Bro, like everything has its purpose. Everything is perfectly placed and perfectly created. All by accident, though, by some big bang, right? The closer we get to the truth, the more we are going to wake up and realize how real God is and how God created all of this. The closer we get to God, the more powerful we become. The more powerful we become and the more our vibrational frequencies rise, the more spiritual gifts we unlock within ourselves. The more spiritual gifts that once you start unlocking spiritual gifts within yourselves and you start doing things that you never thought were possible, that's when you're going to realize God is very, you're, you're undeniable now that God is absolutely real. That's where I am. That's what I hope to get everybody to. And I'm just trying to do my part and help people realize how powerful they are. Because once people get close to God and once people reach their full potential and realize how powerful they are, we won't need them anymore. And by me, and by them, I mean this this beast system, this artificial system, this government. You know, they don't want that. They want us dependent on them. They don't want us to know God. Oh, this world just keeps getting weirder and weirder. That which is weirder, the world that it's always been, but that we've never understood or really ever known, or the world that man has been trying so desperately hard and tirelessly to convince us that this world really is. That hurt my brain. Auntie is about to blow your mind because my mind is blown. But you're gonna have to stick around because this will be a multi-parter. A lot of the proof that I have to share will gobble up a lot of the time in these videos, so it might be a two or three parter. And trust and believe, if you watch part one, you've got to watch part two and three, because that's where the juicy stuff's gonna be, yo. There have been a lot of people sharing proof over the past couple weeks, myself included, making it difficult for any of us to deny that the things we were taught when we were younger, well, we were taught wrong. But first, we know this has to be said. These videos are purely for entertainment purposes only. All facts stated are speculation. There is video floating around of one concerned citizen calling out NASA for potentially fraudulent behavior at his local county commissioner's meeting. Claiming NASA's use of things such as harnesses and visible wires and green screen technology in order to fake footage from the ISS. He also shared multiple examples of video proof. I shared a video about this a few days ago. Go check it out. Couple that with the truth now being exposed about the moon landing never really happening at all with Buzz Aldrin himself becoming extremely vocal about it and never really happening, explaining it was staged and filmed on a studio set right here in the good old US of A. After keeping that secret for almost a half a century, the filmmaker himself reportedly admitted this too. That's not even mentioning what just recently happened to SpaceX. Shortly after launch, it appeared to have run into something and burst into flames. I wonder what that something might have been. Many speculate Elon Musk, who's an absolute genius and has to know that there's a firmament, may have been subtly just trying to let us know, hmm, yep, there is. That, of course, again, is just strictly speculation. But what a cool way to do it, Elon, if it's true. Mad respect. There is a firmament above us. The Bible clearly states it smack dab on the very first page. So having an impenetrable dome above us, making space travel impossible, astronomically so, is that why the space shuttle Challenger exploded in the 80s, causing all seven crew members to lose their life? One would think. 
But upon recent discoveries, it seems one would be wrong. Because if you check out my video I shared yesterday, there are either some very strange coincidences in six doppelgangers with the same names and same faces as six of the seven crew members still alive and well today. Go check it out. Leading many to believe that the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger was equally as staged as the moon landing. With all of this truth coming to light and me sharing the videos that I have shared on all of this up until now, I had a follower ask me a question that really had me go, huh, which led me down a rabbit hole I was not prepared to go down. And I was not prepared for what I had found. As much as I hate multi-parters, the old Tiki Talkie took away, <laughs> that was hard to say. Tiki Talk stripped me of my 10 minute video rights. <laughs> So, welcome to part two. Well, when we last left our superhero, Auntie was talking about NASA, space travel, and how it's all a farce. No moon landing? Possible proof that six out of the seven crew members from the Space Shuttle Challenger are still alive and well? And recent claims that NASA might be staging and faking their footage from the ISS. There's a firmament, people. It's impossible. There is no outer space. So let's get to the question my follower had after one of my videos that sparked my entire rabbit hole dig. Burrow. Dive. Outside of the government finally admitting it in 2020, I think we can all safely agree and admit that yes, aliens are real and they do exist. And of course, in turn, so are UFOs. But I don't believe aliens are what we think they are. And when one follower asked me on one of my videos, well, anti if space isn't real, where are the aliens coming from? Girl, when I say that, stop me in my tracks, and I couldn't rest until I got you that answer. But I'm forever changed now that I know possibly what the answer is. And I can't be changed forever on my own. So I'm bringing you along. Knowing what I know now, I'm so mad at myself. Why didn't I ever question this fact before? What's another word for alien? Extraterrestrial, yeah? The dictionary would want you to believe it is of or from outside of the earth or its atmosphere. Well then somebody at Webster better explain this to me then because terra actually means land. So why do they define terrestrial of or relating to the earth? of or belonging to the land as opposed to the sea or air. Living or growing on the land, earthly, worldly, or mundane. That does not make sense, the math is not mathing. Why in 47 years did I never think to question this? And wouldn't maybe, I don't know, extra celestial be a little bit more suiting of a name for something coming from out there? So extraterrestrial actually means of extra land. Someone from extra land. All right, hang on to your bridges, bitches. It's time to jump down that rabbit hole. And we actually need to go all the way back to the foundation of NASA in 1958 and ask ourselves if space travel is not even possible, why would they even found NASA in the first place, let alone carry on the facade for over 60 years? If we go back just a year before the foundation of NASA to 1957, we might just find our answer right there. I'd like to introduce you to Admiral Richard E. Byrd, an American aviator and infamous polar explorer. But it was his television interview in 1957 that raised eyebrows. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. I just can't stop with these puns. And I may have found the answer to my followers' question. Welcome back, part three. Admiral Byrd had done five expeditions to Antarctica and achieved the first ever flight over the South Pole in 1929. But sadly, Admiral Byrd passed away shortly after that television interview in 1957. And ironically, NASA was formed a year later in 1958. And if we're going to talk ironic, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by all 12 countries in 1959, basically shutting down exploration of Antarctica for private individuals, also shutting down flights over Antarctica, and any exploration without a special government-approved permit. Hmm. So now we really have to wonder, was NASA just a diversion? Uh, look up here, not down there, to keep the mysteries of whatever truth really lies in Antarctica under wraps. But I promised you I'd get you the answer to your question. If space isn't real, but aliens are, where do they come from? When I tell you I was not ready, I was not prepared for this, not one bit. I stumbled upon a story, a story about Admiral Byrd's exploration of Antarctica between 1946 and 47. He referred to it as Operation High Jump. This may very well be the reason they are hiding Antarctica's truth from us all. No, aliens aren't coming from other planets or galaxies. In fact, they may be visiting us much closer to home. So this whole time, we've been looking for aliens in the entirely wrong direction. There is no outer space. And more importantly, where is this land that Admiral Byrd had discovered? 76 years later, and it's still not even on our map. Undiscovered land beyond the South Pole? Extra land. Extra terra. Making extraterrestrial make a whole lot more sense. Isn't there a problem? What do you think? Will you walk away? Will you walk away? 
Will you call my name? Will you call my name?